laws that work, rethinking Ghana's national development path. And I hope this brief presentation would not be an anticlimax. Having listened to the very erudite presentation um, from Dr. Mensa Bonsu on behalf of the um, uh, National Development Plan, uh, National um, Development Authority. I don't know whether that's how you call yourself. The world in which we live does not have limitless resources, and yet populations which need these resources for survival and development are growing exponentially. It is the reason why, regardless of the circumstances of our existence, whether in seeming isolation or in communities, laws and regulations are required to structure our relationships, our control or dominion over resources, our very existence. Societal living, communal existence, provides a vehicle, indeed an avenue for a speedier and better assured or secured development of the community, as well as the individual within the community. It is worth stating that by far the greater proportion of the limited resources are not replenishable. That indeed is worrisome, and therefore should engender a recognition that re the resources of any country, any community, must be utilized for the development of the populations of today and generations yet unborn. Indeed, the preamble of the 1992 Constitution states, and I quote, in the name of the Almighty God, we the people of Ghana in exercise of our natural and inalienable right to establish a framework of government, we shall ensure for ourselves and posterity the blessings of liberty, equality, opportunity, and prosperity, etc., etc. Do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this constitution. So we're talking about the providing for ourselves a framework of government which shall ensure for ourselves and posterity, that is, for the populations of today and the populations of tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And the Constitution says we do hereby adopt, enact, and give ourselves this Constitution. I thought Mr. Abuchi and the I thought we enacted constitutions before we do adopt them. Uh, but our constitution says that we are adopting the constitution, enacting, and then we give ourselves this constitution. Um, the card before horse arrangement is just by the by. But ensuring liberty, equality, opportunity, and prosperity for today's generation as well as generations yet unborn, is a recognition of a burning need for sustainable utilization of the resources of the nation. Today, the world, through the United Nations, has subscribed to sustainable development goals. Sustainable development is the pivot of Ghana's 1992 constitution. In the event, Whatever laws that are passed by Parliament, as Article 92, as Article 93, Clause 2, vest in Parliament, whatever executive authority the President exercises in accordance with Article 58, 1, and whatever judicial power is administered by the judiciary, as Article 125, 3 stipulates, shall all be subject to the vision, aspirations, and aims of the people as encapsulated in the preamble of the Constitution. Now, if all these three arms of government were so purposed, we would not have a situation where, at the beginning of the 20th century, the first cover of the nation totaled about 7 million hectares. And only one century later, the first cover has shrunk 
to less than 700,000 hectares. That is just about 10% of what obtained a century ago remains as our forest cover. We don't have a situation where for over 300 years, exploitation of gold was by deep shaft mining. And just over two decades ago, but especially over the past 10 years, we have allowed for massive assault on our vegetation and river bodies. No thanks to the gather them and sell, or if you may, galamse operators with scant regard for the interest and indeed the survival of our children and our children's children. Today, recognizably, the southern belt of Burkina Faso is greener than the northern section of Ghana, even though it is rainier in the upper part of Ghana than the southern portions of Burkina Faso. And without shame, we import tomatoes and mangoes from our otherwise drier neighbor. The directive principles of state policy contained in chapter six of the constitution exist as a guide or guard for the establishment of a just and free society as provided for under Article 33.1, and the pathway is defined as political, economic, social, educational, and cultural objectives, as well as international relations. With the greatest respect to the other arms of government, it is important to restate what has become axiomatic. That parliament is the bulwark of good democratic governance. If Parliament were to exercise its functions properly, a lot of the ills that have been afflicting this country would not arise in the first place. Parliament has the power of peers function. It is the gatekeeper of the national peers. Ordinarily, this function is exercised during the scrutiny and approval of budgets. If Parliament insisted that it would not allow any president to exceed the ceiling of allocations as captured in the Appropriations Act and provided sanctions against errant presidents or executives, there will be sanity in our financial administration and economic development would be guaranteed. For the 2016 financial year, the total national expenditure is 50 billion Ghana cities. And one is keenly watching whether election year tribulations will not visit the nation once again. In 2012, we, have, we had an overshot of about 8.6 billion in the election year, which represented more than 27% of what was contained in the Appropriations Act. If Parliament were to exercise the oversight responsibilities diligently, whilst the budget cycle is rolling out, the programs and projects and programs and projects are being implemented, implemented, and as loans are being contracted, over-invoicing, under-invoicing, unbridled sole sourcing and restrictive tendering shall become things of the past, or at least become hugely minimized to save the nation millions of hard money that end up in private pockets instead of being utilized to deliver basic amenities like schools, potable water, electricity, clinics, and farming implements to the deprived communities. But there is an important matter is, given the utmost importance of Parliament in overseeing our development program, whether short-term, medium-term, or long-term plans, as are now being fashioned, Given the utmost importance of Parliament, and indeed the role of parliamentarians, are we, by the conduct of business in the various political parties, electing the right caliber of persons to Parliament to make the relevant laws that will shape the future development of Ghana? Ministers are appointed by the President with the prior approval of Parliament 
to assist the president in the determination of the general policy of government, as Article 76, Clause 2 provides. The president appoints them, in addition to being assisted by these ministers to determine general policy, the president appoints them for the efficient running of the state, as captured in Article 78, Clause 2 of the Constitution. Assisting the president to determine policy of government or for the efficient running of the state both require competence in the sectors to which the president would designate his appointees. Running a sector of the state efficiently is not child's play. It is not trial and error. It is born out of one's deep knowledge, competence, capacity, intelligence, managerial acumen, and above all, wisdom. If Parliament were to comply with the constitutional imperatives during the approval process, then the scenario of, please, I do not know. Let me have the opportunity to go to the ministry and I will learn from a potential minister who is asked the most rudimentary questions concerning his or her portfolio will become things of the past. The nation will be spared. The Mipaminia syndrome, which leads us to the create loot and share superhighway. Without any shred of doubt, Mr. Chairman, I do agree that we must have laws that work if we are to set the country on the path to sustainable national development. I thank you very much for your indulgence with these brief remarks. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much.